All right, I know a lot of my viewers are going to be saying, why are you, why are you wasting time on that v VCO thing? Why don't you just put in a, a digital a synthesis chip or, or some other type of uh, a circuit to generate your own, to generate your own clock? Um, and that's a good idea, and I had thought of that, and I wanted to try the other one first. Um, I thought that maybe it has a better, actually better performance than uh, these fancy chips these days. So we might, we might, we might measure that someday. But uh, I thought just in the completeness, and uh, I've, I've never actually played with one of these before, so it's for my own, my own education as well. Uh, you can get these on eBay for only a few bucks. They're, they're, they're not much money. And it is a um, triple output clock generator. It outputs three different clocks. You can, you can program these three different clocks different ways. It's I squared C, so it's very, very easy to, to, to build a little prototype board. So I just have two wires and I'm done, right? And I can generate any clock I want here. And I've got a little Arduino on here. Um, so what is this chip? Well, this chip is a uh, uh, SI5351. I mean, uh, yeah, I believe this is the chip that's used in the Nano VNA. Um, and there's a family of them. There's, there's, di there's different chips, but uh, this chip can generate um, voltages, I mean, uh, uh, frequencies from two and a half kilohertz to 200 megahertz. So that's certainly within the range of our VHF radio. So we can, we can get up here to 200 megahertz just fine. So that's interesting. Uh, I squared C. Um, so one of the, inter one of the interesting things here is, um, it um, it generates its clock a strange way. It has an it has an oscillator, and you can put a crystal out here, and so you you have a crystal oscillator, or you can bring in your own your own um, frequency. And uh, there's two phase lock loops, so you can set up one phase lock loop for one frequency and a second phase lock loop for a second frequency. But there's three outputs. And so uh, whichever output you use, you can only use one of the, one of the PLLs, right? There's not a third PLL. So, um, so what are these, what's the second stage? The first stage takes your incoming frequency and boosts it up high. And then the second stage divides it back down low. And so um, the two frequencies, if you're going to have three frequencies, two of the frequencies have to share, share, share one of the high frequencies. Anyway, that's the way it works. Um, but there are other versions. Uh, this version has some control logic and a addressable I squared C. It has a pin for that. And uh, it has lots of output. So this one has uh, eight, eight different outputs. And then this one also has eight different outputs, but it has a VCO built in. So we could replace our VCO with a VCO. So that's really interesting. I, I, um, I, I don't know if I can get a hold of one of these chips. I don't know if I've seen them on eBay or, or around. Um, but yeah, it has a voltage voltage control oscillator chip. So that, that that's very interesting. Anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about how you generate a um, how you generate a signal with this thing. Um, it, it, like I said, there's going to be a, a crystal on the, on the input or, or, a, or an oscillator. Uh, this one, this particular, uh, chip that I got on eBay has an external 25 megahertz, uh, oscillator. So it brings in its own, it, the crystal is not connected to the chip. It's being generated off board. And then that 25 megahertz is being brought in. Um, and you can usually do that with these circuits. You, you just, ignore one of these. You either bring it in the A signal or you bring it in the B signal, um, and you can just bring in an external signal. Uh, this particular chip has a, has a way to bring the clock in individually, but our, our chip, you, you bring it in, you bring it on the either, either one of these pins. And then we're going to uh, boost it up. Now, let me get a pin. We're going we're gonna to have to boost it up to some pretty high, um, high range. I think they recommend you go somewhere between 600 and 900 megahertz. Okay. And so if we're trying to generate, uh, some high, um, number, you know, 144 megahertz, it, we're going to only divide it down a little bit, right? 144 times four or times five is going to get you in this range. Right. 
And so we're going to take our 25 megahertz and have to boost that up to this to this range here. Um, and then we're going to divide it down. Okay. So this is a, a multi. Oh man, this pen is not working good. Uh, we're going to do a, a a multiplication here, and we're going to do a uh, we're going to do a division in the next stage. So we can multiply it up, divide it back down, and then there's actually a second division stage. If you want to go even lower, you can divide it down again. Okay, so multiply, divide, divide, and that's the way these chips work. But let's look let's look exactly at what we're going to have to program. All right, so we're going to have uh, 25 megahertz. And it's going to come into our chip and we're going to multiply it up. So what if we multiply it by, um, let's see, how about 32? We're going to multiply it by 32. All right. And so we're going to need calculator for this stuff. All right. So let's bring a calculator in. Oops. Uh, 25 times 32 gives us 800. This is 800 megahertz, okay? And then we're gonna have to divide that down, okay? We have to do some division, and we're gonna get 144 megahertz, okay? So what do we have to divide it by? We have to divide it by 5.556, okay? Uh, something like that. So we could try to do that. Or we could say, okay, well, uh, in order to make this easier, I, I, I think better at multiplications than I do divisions, okay? So what if I just say, I just want to divide by 6. I always just want to divide by 6. And I still want to get to 100, 144. What do I need here, okay? So 144 times 6, I need... 864 megahertz. That's what I'd like here. Well, then what do I have to multiply it by? 25. So we take uh, 864 and we divide that by 25. We would have to multiply by 34.56. Okay. Okay. So that's what I decided to do. I want to multiply by 34.56 and divide by 6 to get my 144 megahertz. Now, the way these chips work is they have registers, and the registers are not floating point registers, so you can't enter 34.56. What you can enter is A plus B over C. Okay? So 34, let's see, so then A would equal 34, and B over C would have to equal 0.56. Well, I can just make that easy. If I make C equal to 100, then B just is equal to 56. Okay? So I have 34, 56, one hundredths. Okay? And that is the same as 34.56. So that's what I have to enter into the uh, Arduino code. Okay? And we can take a look at that. I think this is big enough for you guys to see. Um, yeah, so here's the statement here. Uh, I'm going to set up phase lock loop B, and I'm going to set it to 34, 560, 1000. Okay, so that's at 56 over 100. I just added an extra zero. The the not numerator and denominator can be any number between one and one million. All right, so you can have pretty fine divisions in this thing. But the first number can only be between 15 and 90, so it's a little bit limiting on the front end. And in addition to that, that intermediate frequency has to be somewhere between 600 and 900. So it's very, very um, tricky about which ones you can use and which ones you can't use. And there's actually a program you can download that that the company who makes those chips will tell you, here's the best register settings for your your particular application. I didn't actually use that. I, I did load, load that program in later on, but it came up with the same solution that I came up with. So that was pretty, that was pretty good. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, 
here's my little board. All right, so let me get uh, power and ground. Uh, we just need five volts. So if I put ground and five volts and turn it on. Uh, okay, so we have, a, we have a red light. And let's hook this up to a frequency counter and um, see what we're getting out of it. Okay, so there we go. We're getting 44 megahertz, 144 megahertz, but it's 0 0.018, so not very accurate. Um, and that accuracy has to do with uh, the goodness of the uh, oscillator that's being used, that 25 megahertz oscillator. And it's obviously off a bit. Um, and so if you wanted to build a radio using this, you would either have to calibrate it or use a better reference standard for your 25 megahertz. Um, so um, we do have the ability, though, to change that fraction, right? We have 34 0.56, well, we could change it to something else, right? And so um, I fiddled around with it in my office, and I have a little frequency counter in my office, and I came out with 34.5557, and you get this instead, Let's see, and I think that was a little bit I think that was like 0 0.001 in my office and that's 0 0.0004. Yeah, it's only a, yeah, it's a little bit off. So the, the, the frequency counter in my office is not, a, it's not to the one like here. This is a, the rubidium standard. So this one, this one is super accurate. And the other one I just calibrate to it. But anyway, they were pretty close. So again, I could, I could change that fraction even a little bit different to, to get a better, 144 megahertz. Um, this one probably is okay for radio work right now, um, that particular fraction. I don't know how it drifts with temperature and other things like that, but um, it just shows that uh, you would have to calibrate this thing. All right, and uh, the way that I did that was I programmed channel one for the 144, and then I, I programmed channel zero for the updated one, the, the 34.5557, uh, so the more accurate one. And um, the other channel, I think, is just leftover from the, uh, yeah, I don't know what frick that is. I, I, I didn't program that one. Um, but you could have a, 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 thir a third one as well. So anyway, um, it just shows you that, you know, it's very easy to design with these things. It does come down to the accuracy of the clock that you have and um, how that clock drifts with temp temperature and stuff. And uh, yeah, but you could do it this way. So I have to get used to um, owning a, a, a fast oscilloscope. Um, 145 megahertz is certainly within the range of this scope. It's 350 megahertz scope. So uh, let's take a look at it on a scope and we'll see some different things. Um, we will see uh, that there's some jitter. So we don't have a nice fine line, we have jitter. Now that's very, very common for these types of chips. Um, whenever you do multiplications and divisions by fractions and things like that, you are gonna get jitter. Now if you do a single sweep, you won't see the jitter. But if you do, if you do averaging, uh, I mean, if you uh, take a look at it over, over a longer period, you'll, you'll see that uh, it, is, it, is, it is moving around. Now, um, we could also do an acquire, instead of regular mode, we could say we want to average. We could take a look at the averages. This is averaging of 16, it looks pretty clean. Average of four, it still has quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of variation even with averaging, uh, averaging of four on. So, um, yeah, it's going to have jitter. So definitely it's going to have jitter. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it with a uh, uh, spectrum analyzer to see how clean the signal is. Okay, so obviously we have a square wave. Uh, this is from th uh, uh, 0 to 1.8 gigahertz. Um, let's go ahead and look at uh, frequency of uh, 144 megahertz. That's our center. And let's zoom in. We'll do a span of, say, 10 megahertz. And there we go. Looks like it's got a little bit of AM on it. 
Um, and we saw that, we saw the jitter, when we looked at the oscilloscope, the jitter was not only side to side, but it was up and down as well. Now that up and down jitter is this, is this AM here, right? And so, yeah, so we're seeing, seeing some AM. All right, let's span back, oops, let's span back out. And uh, there is a marker over here. Let's see. This is at two, yeah, 288. So that's, that's the double. So that makes sense. All right, let's zoom back in here. Oops. And yeah, it's got some other, it's got some other issues and stuff. It's, it's one of these chips, right? Um, 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're fairly healthy little, little spurs and stuff that you have to take. You have to make sure you take care of and the AM, AM you need to make sure you take care of. So, so which one will win? You know, if you put this in there, would you be happy with it? Or is the VCO going to be a cleaner signal, right? Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> you would have to uh, build both and, and, and try them out. I'm sure this would work. I'm sure uh, we could probably make this work. I'm a little bit worried about the AM though, um, if that would get into, into some of the circuits or not, but um, that's what it looks like. All right, and just for curiosity, I zoomed in on the AM modulation uh, to take a look at what these are. It's right at 1000 megahertz. So uh, there is uh, AM at 1000 megahertz. Um, 1000 megahertz, 1000 kilohertz uh, at one megahertz. Okay, so this is at 100, this is 144, and this is uh, one megahertz different. So don't know where that comes from, but uh, there is these, uh, AM modulation right there at, uh, at one megahertz. All right. And then his, this is zoomed into a, uh, uh, span of 200 kilohertz and you can see the FM components here. Remember on this oscilloscope, we saw jitter up and down and we saw jitter back and forth. So this is the back and forth jitter. This is the FM jitter. And so it's a very strange FM modulation, uh, due to the, 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 uh, uh, fractional uh, circuits uh, to do the divisions and, and multiplications. And so, yeah, we're getting this weird, weird FM on it. Um, so um, I bet you the VCO wins. <laughs> I bet you the VCO is going to be cleaner. Uh, but uh, uh, it's interesting. Uh, these here are, let's see, let me turn on Delta marker. Uh, let's go in this direction so it's plus. That's at 12 kilohertz. So maybe it's not audible. Maybe it's not audible. So maybe you could get away with it. But uh, 13 kilohertz, yeah, it's probably fine. It probably, unless it mixes with something else. But you might be able to fil filter this out easily. Um, uh, not, I'm not sure. But I don't think you're going to see this on the VCO. I think the VCO is going to look a lot cleaner than this.